All and right. It's only one shot. I gotta go go big or go home. Yeah, well, welcome, home. guys. This is uh, episode nine of Alloy of Law. It's been so long since we last met. Taylor Swift has put out two new breakup songs. Uh, a whole two. I know. Uh, we are should joined I, tonight I, by... Can I make the pun about her latest breakup, or should I just... Nope, just stay out of it. Okay. Just stay okay. out of okay. it. Uh, uh, we are joined by Lucas, also Zorm, on the Discord chat. For those of you that follow us on exclamation Discord and Twitch chat. Mm-hmm. I am Arthur Perkins. We're going to speed through this. I actually have zero recollection of what happened last time, and rather than attempt to recover it, I feel like we should just steam right past it and go into this episode. <laughs> Kelso, what's been going on with you since the last two months? <laughs> two months. Uh, no, I've been pretty good. Um, I, I, have, I have hair that's colors as opposed to hair that's Yeah, not. I did see that you retouched up that color to like a more bright, deeper purple. Yeah. It's good. Although probably knowing my luck, like the last time anyone saw me, like on the immediately previous was like right after I'd done it previously, at which point it just looks like it's perfect the whole time. So I shouldn't say anything. <laughs> uh, I'm being informed that our last episode was on August 6th, so it hasn't been two months. It's been a month and three days. Okay, All right. That is say. still a very long time. <laughs> I mean, yes, it's yeah. still a very long time. I mean, my rule is if a show doesn't meet at least once a month, you cancel it. Uh, speaking of, we're going to continue sh- introductions, and I'm going to come back to that cryptic statement. <laughs> uh, Tux, how are you doing today? Doing fine. Definitely not sad about anything that happened yesterday. <laughs> yeah, speaking of canceled shows, why don't you tell us about Mass? No, don't. <laughs> Yes. All right, I won't, I won't everybody some time. time. <laughs> uh, that's just mean. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, but really, I am uh, everything pretty good here. Uh, I'm doing stuff and things. Uh, getting ready for tonight, which I've been looking forward to very much since we haven't played in a while. I miss Desha, and I'm ready to cut some more people in half. Who's maybe Desha? We'll see what happens. Um, Who are any of these characters? I don't. Re- I, I mean, <laughs> oh. have I become that crazy old guy that just doesn't remember anything? And now I'm just like, <laughs> "Who are you, my grandson? Are you a boy or a girl? Are you a boy or a girl? <laughs> what was his name again? Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Professor Oak is so bad. And you know what? His cousin is showing up in the new Pokemon game. He looks exactly the same, but he has a tan. That's how you know he's from Hawaii. <laughs> uh, speaking of people who have tans, let's go ahead and talk to Luke. How are you hey. doing today, Lucas? Uh, pretty good. Um, for not working on Monday, it was a really long week. I don't know how that works. <laughs> All, the work from Monday. Up. All the work from Monday was trans- spread out over the other days. Yeah. It is. I mean, the um, easiest way to look at it is just equivalent exchange. Uh, it was nice to have it off. I do actually have Monday and Tuesday off, so I'm making this one a four-day weekend, and I'm not giving any craps about what happens at work until I get back Wednesday. So that's okay with me. Yeah. And otherwise, I'm looking forward to actually sitting down here and doing this, and I have a prop. Yes, it's true. Uh, <laughs> speaking of someone who has a prop, I can't tell whether Wreckage is trying to stare at a woman's breasts or whether he's just hung over and pretending not to be, but I'd like to welcome him to the show today. How are you doing? Hi, Arthur. The a- answer is actually option C. I have problems with insomnia, and these shades block blue light, which has been shown in multiple studies to trigger the wakeful center of the brain and prolong uh, the body's circadian rhythm. Uh, so if you don't have flux on your computer, but still have problems sleeping and don't want to get flux, uh, well, get some shades. Just gonna also, say we that. have this light here that I can't not have when I'm streaming. So flux can't do anything about my lamp in my living room yet. Um, but yes. you know, technology is advancing at an ever increasing pace. <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll get there. We'll I have mean, flux. Soon we'll have cyber decks, full VR magic will return. I hope all of those things are true because uh, that would be a more exciting. <laughs> It'll take film. eighty years, but we'll finally get wireless technology. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
it's a shadow red joke just in case you were wondering i, know, I really it's a, it's appreciate a it. the mm-hmm. build up because i'd already realized it was a shadow red joke and you just kept going mm-hmm. i know i know um i you know apropos of nothing love this show and i'm so excited to get back into it after a whole month it'll probably cure my insomnia that i have been struggling with since <laughs> basically the show stopped being a show so it is clearly the reason and i i can think of no reason why the show would stop you know being there for me on an emotional level and therefore derail my entire life but you know arthur why don't you tell us what you're going to tell us i mean in that regards i do have to mention the show is canceled uh all right everybody we have have, no not tonight don't (laughs) control about that we have two more guests that will be joining us and then alley of law will be wrapping up next week we have yo jojo and on the 23rd we have our final guest fraser simmons who is also the author of the veil rpg Mm. and then something else will be taking place on friday nights i don't know what so don't ask me yet although technically if you're watching this in the future that thing could already be out, so you could ask me then, and I would just refer you to my schedule. Mm-hmm. It's so weird leaving messages to future people. Yeah, you, know, you could be watching this at a point where the show that replaces Mistborn is already canceled. Yeah. Whoa. Oh. Thank you. you could be How many this. Taylor Swift breakup songs will have been written by then? <laughs> you could be watching this Wait, at a point. Where? You could be watching this because we linked it because of Mistborn coming back in like a year. <laughs> Like what? The Mistborn reunion tour at APCon <laughs> 2017. <laughs> if you, like that's the weird thing about putting. You could be watching this in the blown out ruins of a de- dis- discarded civilization. I very much doubt that. Considering fragments of the internet have survived. I was gonna say the internet would just this that. just that's this not, episode of the show. Just not even the full episode. It's like just the first half, you know. Yeah, oh, just us talking 2016. About. If you're getting this, you could 2016. Be, you could be the <laughs> smartest person in your tribe who realized the first half of this video as a way to form a religion <laughs> to control the rest of your tribe. Um, <laughs> Details oh, you do. I, you know, we're going to skip to the point where we do stuff. Although I will say on YouTube in exactly four seconds, I'm going to embed a star chart. It will have blinked on your screen for one frame. If you are aliens, that star chart indicates the exact time and place we are at the filming of this show. Just reverse the records and you'll figure out when exactly this happened. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. All right. No, for uh, your time travel has been uh, is a thing. Aliens are so smart. Never yeah, mind. I could use some advanced technology to turn my <laughs> life around. So um, hit me up, aliens from the future. Uh, also, wreckage may or may not be the Fresh Prince of Bel Air. <laughs> Let me tell you all about how <laughs> my circadian rhythm got flipped, turned upside down. <laughs> So let's, like, <laughs> instead of talking about uh, wreckage and circadian rhythm, while a discussion on that would certainly be enlightening, let's instead talk about schemes and plan of action. And let's let's introduce Headstone real quick. Hello. Just who, wanna... who are you, Headstone? Uh, Gustav Headstone of the Headstone Mortuary family. Um, out of character, he's a debtor, as it's referred to in the book, but... Twin-born iron compounder, and um, his father is a old gold ferro chemist that's lived a long time and has had several wives and many children and has spread his family to many cities. And this is the latest youngest family, and he is a part of that. And there's more, but you know. Would you, wait, 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 wait! I wanna, I wanna actually cover this real quick. When you say spread his family, is he one of those guys that like has a family in every town and just like love them and leave them? I would oh, say God, he's the he probably worst. outlives his wives most of the time he's and the then worst. he's still enough to take the family business. Oh, chain. It's a full chain. <laughs> <laughs> As you can see, it's very lucrative. There's a lot of people that die out here. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Especially in this city. It's weird. <laughs> uh, so you are a thrill-seeking mortician. What yeah. What is your specialty? All things iron. What does that mean exactly? Because you put iron in quotations. Yeah, I wasn't really sure. I was still trying to kind of grasp at that. It was mostly just the fact that he is an iron compounder. And he's finally coming to understand 
the pulling and the weight changing and just some of the other things and metals in general, I guess it doesn't necessarily need to be quoted, but <laughs> I was throwing it out there. Tweaking is uh, something we can do, I guess. But I guess when it, maybe when it comes to anything that's metal, uh, you know, with, within reason, I suppose. Uh, so it looks here that you have a mist coat that you have shaped as a mortician's coat and a top hat. Yeah, he's gonna, he would probably take that out in his night sprawl. So he's kind of been secluded growing up, you know, right in the family business. And now his mom is gone and some of the siblings and he's discovered his powers. He's become quite rebellious, rebellious and looking for a thrill. And so he's like, you know, he's gotta have the misting status. So he, he kind of throws that in a trench coat, wears the top hat. Mm -hmm and goes out on the town, or wants to. Uh, tell me about this coffin top shaped shield. Uh, <laughs> just, I only thought that. Is it, is it like full sized coffin top, like a tower shield? I, I, was, I would say the half, the, the top half. So you got oh, okay. this and that and that, and then it comes across. Because that's pretty easy to construct from the many, many coffins that are lying yeah. around. You know, I was wondering how anime we were going. Because yeah. we, we, we go pretty anime in this show, so. This is don't be afraid. Pretty anime, yeah. That's don't be afraid. Accurate. So, yep, that was, I only had three props. I did that, and then I had a twin board kit just to make sure I was covered for, you know, power usage. At mm -hmm. Sure, cool. sure. I mean, as one does. Mortician's bag, of course, it might be stuffed in there to look official. I just want um, to take a, take a moment to... Uh, like mourn the loss of Erosito, who will die of sadness. I uh, mean, it's his birthday today. He's going out to dinner with his family. Oh, no. We canceled the show no. on his birthday. He, no, first off, he knew it was happening. I told him weeks ago. Oh. oh okay. When I told you guys, I told him. Uh, okay. 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 <laughs> but we canceled the show on his birthday. I mean, <laughs> I canceled the show. Like it is not because ago. of his birthday. Let's make that very clear. But but, but seriously, um, do we birthday. do we talk about what Gustav looks like other birthday. than what he wears? Um, I feel like I don't have an image of him in my head. Uh, he he is about twenty twenty two. I mean, he's become a mortician really because he's done it all his life. He's about 6'1", 235 pounds, so he's physically... Yeah, he sounds like a big guy. Mm -hmm. he, he is. He's, he's done a lot of work. I mean, he's done everything from the grave digging to the hauling the tombstones around, ball bearing if needed, like all his life. And, yeah. you know, um, I would say he's probably got the cold gray eyes and just palish blonde hair, kept short, and, you know, very proper most of the time. Um, now, I mean... And human. For for me, maybe it's just all the vampire movies and TV shows I watch, but I always assume that morticians are like sixty years old. They have yeah. thin, <laughs> stringy gray hair that's bald on the top, uh, <laughs> and they're generally untrustworthy and will instantly betray you to the other side. You're very <laughs> different from them. Well, that might why be why are you so ripped? Basically, like. Do you well, do I, the grave, grave digging, digging yourself? Mm -hmm. I just went, I don't know. I mean, that's kind of how the all the stats fell, but I would just say he was a hard worker and a healthy and just got big and didn't really do a lot of socializing. So his charisma and his social skills are, and his wisdom, his experience in life is way down here. So he's real like, oh, okay, sure. But he's just, he's, he's a big dude and just learned his powers and that's about as well rounded as he's come so far. All right. Uh, let's go ahead and start cool, yeah. the scheme and plan of action. Somewhere during the middle of it, I'm going to turn my camera off and go get a drink, as is <laughs> traditional. But uh, at some point, Tox will just take over for me, because he always sure. does. Let's talk about what your goal is this week, guys. Um, I mean, you've got this... You're, you're like a groupie, right, Headstone? You're you're a fan oh, yeah. of their work of leaving corpses strewn across the city. <laughs> right? I mean, I, I've read it in the paper, and then I've seen it in person as that business has come literally to my doorstep. Mm -hmm. actually, actually, probably went out and cleaned it up and brought it back, and I'm like, wow, three parts? I didn't know you could be split that many times. <laughs> <laughs> Bullet, you know, just there's a whole bunch of strange things. And to him, 
according to the newspaper, it looks like these guys are heroes, and he kind of likes the idea of being I mean, a, a hero. Yeah. There's one newspaper that's saying that, yes. Uh, <laughs> that must be the one he's been reading. That's the only important one. That's the best one. The best one. So, yeah, groupie. I mean, it's mm-hmm. written by the world renowned Daryl Hart. Exactly. <laughs> So, yeah, he it's might been be a while since anybody's well. seen Daryl. Actually, he's still still putting out still putting out articles though. Yeah, that's I mean, so he's weird. become one of those you know mysterious and intriguing reclusive authors. People get mm. factual quotes, but they talk to somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> so they're like, "Yeah, I said something like that, but it was to a totally different guy. Actually, it was to a woman." <laughs> Weird, Where huh? in the world is Daryl Hart? He so weird. Say. Daryl Hart's gonna become like, like Deep Ear or whatever. Like he's just gonna know everything and be everywhere. <laughs> was that like, a, <laughs> was that a Watergate reference? Deep Ear? Like yeah, really? it's like it's it, like it's yeah. it's no. like, when when Alloy of Law <laughs> flips from Western to nope. like twenties gangsters. No, he's going to be like yeah. the the guy. Listen, man, and, Deep Ear is a terrible code name. Okay, but, that's like, fine. People will use his name as like you better be careful, man. Daryl Hart might hear you. Like, yeah, like they will. People ain't be... seen Daryl Hart for fifty years. <laughs> Daryl Hart's a myth, and you know it. Like, <laughs> the door like blows in right at that moment. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it'll like when the world flips from um, western to like gangsters in the twenties, he'll be like. He'll be like um, in Big O, the guy who knows everything. And you go into the you go into the bar and you sit down next to him. You pretend to read the paper and you pass the money. And he's got like this spy network that he just runs. And anyway, <laughs> I'm I'm writing the future of Virgil's character for him. And he's got- <laughs> sounds good. So our goal. What is your goal this week? I have no fucking idea. Um, I know we were interested in checking out this power plant, but. Uh... What That's we I, you mean the I power feel plant like from episode one. I feel <laughs> like one. I feel like with the groupie, maybe the groupie should be the one bringing us the objective or have the goal. Yeah, like, thrill I, seeker. I, what is it exactly you are hoping to accomplish when you hang out with your cool new friends? Maybe you need somebody deaded, and you're like, these are the guys to go to. I don't know if he feels that kind. Of, well, I mean, he could have lost some family to some violence, um, but. Really oh, oh. Just, he wanted I mean, to survive an unsurvivable uh, situation. It's really his bucket list item. And then look, this, like taking a train on, or you know, this off. might be this might be presumptuous of me, Lucas. Oh, go ahead. Um, but but uh, maybe you're sick to death of the the undying father never dying, and you want your goddamn inheritance. Well. I mean, that could always be. <laughs> it takes him away from his naive niceties, but I mean, it's okay. He hasn't been, he hasn't actually played anything yet. I know I can't quite pull that gold stake out of his chest as much I as feel like, I feel like it needs to be a thing that we tell him is really good, but isn't necessarily all that good. That would work better. Like basically most of what we do. Uh, He's naive. Right, exactly. Like, so we need to, we need to like, uh, we like take somebody down, but be like, "Oh no, he's a bad guy." Trust us, he's a he's a he's a bad man. Like, okay. oh, <laughs> and really just like, oh yeah, well he just. You know, I almost I almost way. want to start this end media res with Dixon and the gang bringing in a burlap sack into the um uh the mortician's office and just dumping a body and being like, oh you know, uh. I'll pay you extra not to ask any questions. And like, and then the whole time we're going back and forth, like about this murder, like, like Dash is like, I told you that it was a bad idea to do that there. I'm like, oh, Miss Dash, you worry your head too much. And it's like I'm like wiping blood off of my sleeves, like this comedy carry on body dump. Um, and and like you're like, oh, can I have your autograph? What? <laughs> I mean, you guys actually came to the mortician shop yourself in person. That would be quite a treat, probably. Well, it's like midnight. It's mm-hmm. like the 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 Landau oh, sure. drives up, and Daisy's like, "We gotta get going, Dix. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have a lot of time." Like bonking the horn, like yes, 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 I know. Um, 
how much to just make this go away uh <laughs> yeah we could probably do that like for how we meet uh that's fun yeah that'd be cool that's um he probably would be working yeah. because he has no life unless he was <laughs> out stalking it depends on if his father lets him go or not so <clears throat> so let's see didn't we have a politician or something that we ha- that we were having troubles with it like or did we already kill him? God, we killed all of them. We killed him. I, I, I'm trying, like... Uh, I mean, there's always the guy that's, like, Cypher's characters. Uh, um, yeah, we kind of just had a me? bonding moment with him, though, and Cypher's fucked off, so we don't care about <laughs> him anymore. He's still in chat right now, actually. <laughs> I mean, he okay, but if he wants his arch enemy <laughs> oh. dead, then he shouldn't leave the show. I mean, Lord Peter McKinley is a is a legit gangster, rapidly rising in the world now that you're killing off all his enemies. Yeah, I, and I feel like perhaps maybe that should be the the foundation of a friendship and not a murder. I mean, he's basically Alexander Hamilton, and you're Aaron Burr doing do. Oh, well, no, it's the other way around because you're the one in constant duels murdering people, and he's the one rising through the ranks. <laughs> yeah, so maybe he, you know, feels some kinship to us. Oh. Let's not answer that question yet. Um, <laughs> but it, um, I don't. I feel like we don't want to jump the gun and kill him. I mean, does the power plant need to be leveled? No, we don't have any opinions about the power plant. So most of the episode, if well, we made I about think the power plant, we really plant. should just just burn it to the ground. I heard from some very well educated gentlemen that it was a bad idea. Oh, you just lost a check. Two <laughs> <laughs> meta, two meta minus five XP. <laughs> <laughs> um. Ah, uh, gosh. Um. I mean, no, seriously, did you say that your father has a spike in his chest? Well, I was thinking he's a gold fair, fair, fair chemist, so it could be anything, really. But he's just lived a long time, and I was thinking of him as the typical mortician character that Arthur was describing earlier. Right. He used to be a lively businessman, living past several wives, and then after the death of his last wife, my mom, it actually hurt him really bad, and he became very stubborn and just like, just go do your work. The only way to get a rise out of him is to be rebellious. And, but yeah, he's old. He's probably oh, so, but old. so, but, but the only way to get a rise out of him is to be rebellious. So he's got his whole family under his thumb. Pretty much. Yeah. He, well, I mean, his, his mom, his mom would have been like a misting of some sort because, you know, he just tries to off breed or offspring like many powerful kids to keep it going. So Jeez. what it a, might be time for him to go. I don't yeah, know. What um, a, what a, what a, Fuck, what a Scrooge. Let's kill him. <laughs> Let's kill him and maybe steal his gold ferrochemy, but definitely free you from underneath the thumb of your awful father. I love the idea of Dixon is like writing down notes right now. Like, if I have a lot of kids, I'll have a lot of powerful children. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but then it's like, wait a minute. I'm literally helping this child kill his father. And then I scratch that all out and be like, no, <laughs> never, period. Well, yeah. I- You've helped a lot of children and fathers die, so... What's so... one more? <laughs> <laughs> Slippery slope. Do we, do we have a real reason to kill this person? No, so I think it's a... I think, I think the order of operations is we dump a body in the mortician's office. He's fans. He comes up to us and he's like, please kill my dad. Um, and originally... Really? And at first we're like, we don't kill people. What are you talking about? And then he's like, no, please, please, please. Oh, he's got the chalkboard. And he's got like red chalk attaching all of these different events where he's like, on and that so day, and then we're like, okay, Nolan maybe. Sorrento question mark. <laughs> and they're like, okay, maybe where we'll was kill you. the body? <laughs> <laughs> maybe we'll kill him to shut him up. And then it's like, I'm just so sick of his this gold. He's never gonna die. He's got gold ferric in him. Like, really? And then we're like, like quick flash cut to the the only surviving tablet that we have, which is gold ferric Um, and then like back to upstairs, and we're like, well, I think we can work out a business arrangement, Mister Headstone. Uh, I think it's just terrible that your father is. Wait, are you thinking of hemolurgy or fi- right hemolurgy? Right, but we the only. The only thing that we have is to steal gold ferrochemy. That's the only thing that we have. That's correct. 
Oh. So that's the only one we know how to do. Okay. It's all about where you put the spike, buddy. So what you're saying is that we need to create another gold spike following these directions and infuse it while killing his father. Yep. I feel I feel like it's um into the highest bidder. I mean, it could come down to pulling the spike right out of his chest or wherever it is. I mean, I, I feel like maybe I mean, Dixon wants to live forever. So ferrochemists don't have spikes. Oh yeah, that's right. He would have a if we some, something gold on his person that would do that. That's right. Oh well, yeah, those can be taken. Those can okay. be taken. Right? And I then, mean, maybe your dad is one of those weird freaks that literally puts his bands into himself so that he can access them and other people can't take them off of him. That could be possible. So he'll never die. <laughs> I'd like to rip the those The only right way to him, kill him is old age. Mm. Or, or, or a hemallergic spike that literally steals his powers. I mean, that's the thing. Uh, so it sounds like your goal is to acquire a hemallergic spike. Well, I think our primary goal is kill his dad, and our secondary goal is do it in a way that gives the only person who doesn't have gold ferrochemy in this. You know, it's a pretty good thing that the show's ending because we're never going to die. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that sounds like a primary secondary thing. Okay. Kill. Uh, there we go. Uh, what's your dad's name? You know, I thought I had a name at one point, but if I wrote it down Christoph somewhere. Gustav Headstone. Think the life. I'm Gus I'm Gustav and then I oh wait, actually I might have had that written down. Take the life of Father Headstone. Sven. Reindeers yeah, are uh, better than people. <laughs> Sven, don't you think that's right? Uh how are you performing this job? What is your method? Well, Oh he man, he probably has several employees and also siblings that are around day and night. So I'm assuming some kind of nice house. I don't know. Um, I mean that's not that's not a method. That's a description of where he is at. That's true. We're starting, yeah. but that's how we start brainstorming. So he lives in a nice house. He's old and he's got his thumb underneath his whole family. So probably everybody hates him. But like, it's that sort of. I still want to be in the will kind of hatred. Um, what? Uh, Is that what? a thing? Yeah. Haven't you ever seen a family of people that are so sick of their 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 granddad or their, their matriarch or their patriarch who's just a total asshole, but they can't no. show it because they want to still be in – Really? That's they, horrible. It is bad, but, you know. I'm sure there are people like that, yeah. Anyway, um, I mean, now that you said it, I am sure that that's a thing that probably exists. It's very <laughs> sad. Yeah. So, is our method just going to be like straight up assault, or uh, are we going like, to try to sneak in? I think we should. Uh, hmm. You cause a ruckus that brings them to a location. I mean, I kind of think of the. I'm not sure how it was back then, but they kind of the corner too, maybe to arrive on the scene, and you know, you could lead them into a trap almost. Uh, we got like three episodes left. Do you guys just want to get crazy and start doing some crazy things? Because uh, I, mean, like, I mean, that's an excuse that's always going to fly well with me. Um, <laughs> that's fine. We got like, three episodes left. Let's get crazy. <laughs> I heard there's this a one. whole world we haven't conquered yet. Uh, I mean, I do still want to be Lord Governor. Um, <laughs> so uh, the because uh, the, the first thing I'm thinking of is if we're going to try as a secondary goal to steal his or gold ferrochemy that's going to be pretty difficult in an assault but what we could do is uh lure him to the beaumont estate uh and the first thing that came to my mind was fake marrying daisy to headstone <laughs> all right let's do it that's one of those just crazy things. enough to work one of those I fake mean... marriages that ends up becoming real by accident I mean, to be fair, it was my suggestion to make your character marry. <laughs> and then, and then we'll have them break up. And then I mean, we'll have them meet his family. He's about to take charge of. So you know, it's like the the, the, I mean, the, the old codger literally murdered her last lover. The old codger is traditional, literally. and he's gonna want. There's gonna be like this dowry bargaining, like not really, not like tribally, but like he's gonna come talk to the head of house of the house that might be marrying his son and 
that'll be the the best way to set up the elaborate um team allergical scheme. okay so method is marriage ruse to lure him to our place and kill him yes I just love how many of our plans end with and kill him. <laughs> we haven't and then they die. <laughs> Have we gone a single episode without killing somebody? I uh, mean, we, I, I mean, we, I mean, no, I don't think so. But I've seen what's standing in your way. Um, uh, he's a gold ferrocat. Wow, well, that, that's one. Um, that's one of those things that goes with that. There, I, does it count if he has, I don't know, like, an entourage with him, or I don't even know if he would. Who would a rich old man like that have as his, as his right? Probably like a right hand man or something. No, you know what? I think he has. He's gonna his, need a right hand man. I think okay. he has. Yeah, he's got an odd job. Um, he's got an odd job to our Desha. Uh, I mean, there might be hesitancies from my side if my siblings are pushed in between. If they I'd have say that there's the other thing is probably that there are some vultures in your family that literally never leave him alone. Because they just they trying to get into his good graces to be at the yeah, top. Yeah, sure. Yeah, and, rest up. And, and the reason family. I had set up in the past actually was he was like the third son in the family, and both of the older sons had died. Because originally he wasn't even going to be a part of the business. He's like, all right, I'm just going to get educated and do something. Oh, both of the older sons have died. Now it's on me, and I don't want it. But things might change, and then. Okay. Yeah, we, 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 we can put down rest of Headstone family, and then that'll lead. Yeah, like, like, well, like he's like got the all of these. It's, like, it's the mafia. Exactly. Like what Daisy is saying, which is like the the where where <laughs> Bilbo is gone for a couple of months, and they're already ha- trying to hawk all his stuff because yeah. like, <laughs> he's a vulture. Um, <laughs> um, which just means that he's got like a bunch of hangers on, like nieces and nephews and that whole like sub family that doesn't amount to anything but it's hoping is to to make their break in the will sort of thing right um Mm -hmm. um, okay so we got that rewrite Uh, the will to my name Mm. let's see i guess it'll probably be well that'll i guess that, that that's a thing it's not something that's standing in our way i was thinking about like actually making the spike but that's just a an objective not like I mean, we literally have the instructions, so right. I don't feel like that should even be something that we visit upon. We have the spike. Like, maybe we actually have to worry about performing the procedure, but we, we couldn't possibly have less standing in our way to actually create the spike. What's, what then? So then what else would be standing in our way? I guess I should be looking at the sheet here. Um, so yeah, rest of the family. Mm-hmm. But you're in, I guess. He? Just off himself? I'm not sure. Yeah, I, I think actually the odd job and like being surrounded by people all the time is. That's the way. I mean, that's enough. It's also what's plausible, right? Like, yeah. yeah. That's, that's enough as far as additional obstacles. All right, then we need to like speed this up a little bit. This right. is like episode yeah. one level of making making we a game. Like a month. Okay, what's our in? We forgot, we forgot uh, how to make schemes. What, what's our in? What our in is uh, that uh, Gustav and marriage plan. Gustav marriage plan. He's always sort of done this when his sons get married. I guess like we just know that it's going to. We know that he's going that's to come. The thing. We know that that's a thing. Yeah, like there's there's no question. This episode is not going to be like. And then we do the marriage ruse, and he's like, "Fuck you guys, I'm not going anywhere." Um, okay. Yeah, Gustav marriage plan. He's going to come meet us because that's how it works. Yep. Okay. Uh, what do you have to work with? Let's set up a room in the mansion that is ready to perform the procedure, like the the crazy procedure that we saw in the temple. All right. Um, Set up a murder room. Got well, it. We nope. set up yep. a, a, set up a murder room. <laughs> surgical room. Uh, room accomplished. Done. Um, down text. So all we need to do. Oh, and let's have some uh, sleeping poison or whatever so that he can we can put him to sleep at dinner or whatever and drag okay. him into the murder room. Bring that out, can't they? What? Oh, right. That's right. Damn. Never mind. Um... um 
yeah, we're going to need some restraints then. Um, I mean, can we hire, um, no, never mind. That's not a thing. Um, well, he, gold makes you healthy, but it doesn't make you strong. Right. Yeah, we just need to be normal. So he's still, an, he's still an old ass man. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So all we really need to do is take care of our job. We've killed people before. Um, I, mean, I could, I could, he probably weighs less than me. I could probably pull him to me if that's. Okay. Uh, uh, so, so our surgical room, um, what else we have to work with? is um uh, <clears throat> that's that's enough maybe. right do we need anything else we gotta hurt um, this up. maybe like some rumors that are going around that would make a political marriage into our family more appealing oh that sounds kind of cool yeah sure uh Sure, but like, um, let's see. So it's not suspicious, like, is the point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, maybe, maybe it's been a little while since the last episode, like, and like it, that's been going around, like, maybe, yeah, maybe it's been like a, a month or three. And so, like, like, yeah, a month or three. <laughs> that works. And, uh, that make the marriage. Not so suspicious. Don't you know? Warning, do not enter this uh, game. Oh my god. Plane. What? I literally just had a bunch of fucking pop-ups show up all at once on my screen. Desperation, Mr. Wow. Oh my god, they're still coming. What is happening? Uh, uh, virus? I don't know. I think I got them all. Russian virus. Uh, what don't you know? Um, Jesus. We don't know what this odd job guy can do. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's true. Right hand man. I feel do. like Bulbapedia has failed me for the last time. Oh, no. <laughs> what right hand man can do. Uh, uh, um, I mean, uh, uh, Gustav does not know actually where he sits in the will. So that's totally like that's only an outcome that's only an outcome thing but we definitely don't know that he's actually going to get anything he's just sick of the old guy he's at well that's god true. he's actually just the only person listed with a with <laughs> a clause really with the clause that he doesn't murder his father <laughs> <laughs> well obviously we can't let it get back I mean, to him. he's not murdering his father so what kind of hacks do you about. take us for arthur I I guess he, he might not know. He might not have ever seen it. He might have just been told yes or no or never even asked, maybe. Um, he just might want it to be over and not care if he has the business or not. I mean, he is a thrill seeker. Okay. He's done this enough. He's done it for 20 years. <laughs> it's time to do something else. You, you've done it since you were a wee baby? Yeah. Okay, is that all we want to do for what we don't if know? I can hold a scalpel at the age of four months. So you got me to work right away. Okay. No waste in time. Well, all right, then. Yep. Uh, what could go wrong? Um, we could bot. No. Um, we could accidentally get married. <clears throat> oh no! Really? It, Wreckage? It's, it's, really? <laughs> I'm saying we could accidentally. You know what? I'm not. Married. You know what? It's your it's your part of the show. You do what you want. I'm gonna go um, get that drink now. I'll say what could go. I guess. There's the whole trip. I mean, he could not come. But no, I guess no, we've, we've, no, we've established we, we, it. Definitely no. Oh, okay, okay, okay. We've literally um, made that not a possibility. We, so he, could, we could kill him without stealing his gold ferrochemy. Not that bad of an outcome. Obviously, like, remember, this isn't the part for the things that can always go wrong. Like, we could fail to kill him. We could get caught. Like, those are always true. But we... Like weird specific, stuff, like... Um, specific to this situation, we could accidentally go through with the marriage which is genuinely not something we want to happen. Um, it's not the worst outcome. It's not the worst outcome. We could fail to kill him in such a way where we acquire his gold. Yeah, uh, I guess, well, the worst thing that can happen is we don't get the gold. We somehow fail to kill him. Um, there you go. And, yeah, like, the worst thing, like, we fail to kill him. Um, but we don't necessarily are looking at, like, the worst thing. This could be, like, um, like... The power plant that we've ignored since episode one literally explodes. Yeah, but they haven't even installed it yet is the problem. Like, there's 
well, no, we're not. Yeah, they have. No, they. It, it, the politics are about trying to get the permits and stuff. Are you sure? Because I'm. Yeah, because sure the that. protesting is trying to prevent the power plant. I think you guys were the last episode on the train with Peachy. I think you guys were debating that with some of the politicians on the train. Yeah, basically, yeah, some people but, want the like. Some people think it's backwards, and other people think it's it's forwards, and it hasn't happened yet. And I was pretty sure to, it had in fact happened. Well, and unfortunately, there, Arthur went and got a drink. There was like an episode <laughs> where there was like one of the screen, I, well, like uh newspapers up against the screen was a splash of them like clipping the ribbon in front of it mm. maybe i'm misremembering that but i seem to recall that have happened um, what the heck's a war forged it's from D. oh yeah uh, the, the abron world so do we want to make it fail to kill him or do we want to make it something else no i think we got so that uh <laughs> Accidentally get married, accidentally not steal his powers. Not well, we already know we could fail to kill. That's like basically obviously. Um, maybe the like odd job is more than we can handle. Um, uh, oh oh oh! What about accidentally marrying the odd job instead of? You can't marry somebody. This isn't a '70s sitcom. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you're either gonna get married to, to quit, this quit ruining my dreams. Um, what comes next? Come on. It's not like, oh, you said I do. Whoa. Um, <laughs> and then, like, like, Alf is like, I ate a cat. <laughs> yeah, that's how it goes. That's exactly how it goes. That was- uh, so, what comes next? Um, if all goes according to plan, then the entire Beaumont family has gold uh, and can never die. Uh, <laughs> and then we. We'll grow forever. I guess we. Uh, what comes next is we go f- we head for the lord governorship or something no we have to get more political power we maybe do the power plant <laughs> we maybe finally interact with the power plant depending on what yo is. no i feel like the last episode the very last <laughs> scene we do is the setup for the power plant job like... <laughs> i just want to can about or something and then just fade to black no, it's got to be an epic yeah. battle on top of the power plant while in the rainstorm with swords, electricity oh, yeah. everywhere, and it's like, uh, like we we have we have three episodes to set up the most anime ending possible. I mean, yeah. I was already planning to start a show with sword fights on a rooftop during a rainstorm. So, <laughs> I mean, uh, I'm running something cyberpunky at some point. So, first objective. Okay. Um... Meet with Headstone. Yeah, set up. I guess set up the fake marriage. Oh, I I literally met meet with Gustav. Oh, like yeah. Have are we going on the assumption that you've already met Gustav, and you're preparing I would like to, to put all of that in the past because we don't. Okay have a lot then. Of um. So yeah, yeah. we've we that, that that brief interlude that we like talked about like with bringing a body and like doing that whole thing and we, just, uh, we, we described it whatever. and and all of that, our. Diehard fans were able to put it into their minds perfectly. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I don't know that any of those stuff. things are true. Well, let's run with it. Uh, so, yeah, first objective. Um, well, my first right. objective is to get uh, six EVs, but that's, you know, that's me. Uh, what a lame <laughs> objective. Um, you know, oh, you know, no, I'm going to let it pass. I'm going to let it pass. <laughs> so... So um, I think the first objective is to like have the um, the head of the headstone family like, oh, you know, you've just come in. Please sit down for lunch. Like, let's appraise him and and size him up as a person um, and like also like size up his entourage like that's objective one. Okay, so, yeah, appraise. uh did we end up naming him? No. I had a couple. Um, Buford Headstone. Moses. Moses Headstone. Yeah, get Gustav fa- the father's power level. Abraham Headstone. <laughs> or, actually, Abraham would actually be... <laughs> All right, it's Abraham. We've decided. Uh, objective two. <laughs> All right. Uh, Objective two is to um, 
plan the like taking out of his uh the bodyguard his odd job um random task <clears throat> objective uh, three is to do that objective four is to restrain what's his face okay, so are we not doing the marriage thing then the marriage is the pretense for the entire thing. Like, there's people running around setting up the estate for a marriage. There's like it's white the background frills. that's going it's, on. It's what brings him here, but at no point, like the thing that could make us accidentally get married is not being able to move forward with the plan fast enough that we have to keep the pretense up so long that like the marriage happens. So, are we not going to have set up fake marriage as an objective? Uh. I guess we can put that there after, right after this first thing. Well, we, we could have put it with what we have to work with already set up fake marriage, but we didn't. So I feel like you're going to have to set it up now. Right. Officially, right. We now do not have a fake marriage. And right, so going first thing is launch. That's second all, thing. almost certainly going to make your life difficult there. First thing is launch. Second thing is marriage. Third thing is plan taking out odd job. Fourth thing is take out odd job. Fifth thing is is restrain him, and sixth thing is actually perform the procedure. Murder hobo. Kills him. Murder hobo. Except okay. the hobo part, because we have a place to live, and it's where we kill people, apparently. Well, no, we, we set up literally a surgery Murder parlor, citizen. which was just like in the temple with the spike that goes through and then into the next person. Right, but that's in our house. Yes, in the secret room, obviously. Um, right. Does our house have secret rooms? I literally said we're building a manse and I'm putting secret rooms in it. Um, yes, you did. Okay. I remember okay. that. Are those... I mean, you're still holding someone in the basement. I have a, I have a man in the iron <laughs> oh, mask. that's true. <laughs> okay. There, I forgot. Are these good? I had the exact same thought, Keganis. When he was like, so first comes marriage, <laughs> I was like, well, you know, there's that nursery rhyme. <laughs> so uh, are these objectives good no there's no there's no love involved i was i was gonna ask if there's time at the end and we're both alive could gustav and daisha have like a quick end scene or something i mean that's not an objective yeah but that's certainly mm -hmm. something we could have happen for sure yes the answer it, is yes okay Brit, explain to me a praise difficulty of gustav's father because that is very strangely worded uh, I, 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 <laughs> Tux, that is, you really effed that one up because it was praise. Uh, it was like it was it was a size up uh, odd job, or no? Take no. Wait, 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 wait. No. I don't know, man. That, a pra no, yeah, it's not a praise difficulty of Goose's father. It's literally have him to lunch and like see everything that's going on. Right. His entourage his his is yeah a praise difficulty of of the entire situation might be better but it's like we're gonna have a lunch scene he's just come in off of the train or whatever he's just coming down to the manse however he's getting there um and it was like oh you must be so tired but please come in for some sandwiches and this is my lovely sister daisy who will be marrying your gustav uh and then we find out that he's like a loveless bastard and's like i don't give a shit i'm just here because i have to be or we find out that this is the first thing that's ever warmed his heart in years um, and we have to crush an old man who's finally happy. So are they going now? Direction Arthur takes it. Yes. Why not both? Okay. Why not? I was doing my best to try make this try out to take an hour, and I failed. So I apologize I'm for that. <laughs> we suck at doing plans when we're out of practice. Lay them on the table and pull out your jeweler's lens. <laughs> Oh, your gold rating is looking very good right now. You can really see the inset gold bands on your arms. Well, would you say you're about a five or a six? <laughs> now, when I put this spike containing part of your soul inside me, how bad are your nightmares? Will I be <laughs> waking up in the middle of the night? Do you have any vocal tics that I should be aware of? Uh... Cravings for food that I wouldn't like. Um, I will just throw the spike away if you're like into feet or something. You're not into feet, are you? So, uh, <laughs> the first scene is maybe at the the former McFanny estate that is now the the current Beaumont, Beaumont. estate. Yeah. Uh, who is who's in the like parlor room waiting for 
what is his name? Abraham Headman to show up? Headstone. Abraham Headstone. Such a good name. When the name is just right. Mm -hmm. So we've already met then? We've already done... Uh, yeah, like yes. this whole thing is we've this whole plan has happened and we're and okay. So make sure I'm in the well. Right obviously, area. Gustav is there. I'm there. Uh, Desha is there because she's sort of the head of household. Um, and I'm gonna uh, make my appearance a little bit later. Of course, the late. yes, the <laughs> the uh, bride to be make makes an entrance later. Exactly. It's very important. Uh, so what what kind of dialogue do we have on the intro scene coming in? Oh, now, now everybody just, just, uh, best faces. Remember, this is a very official, uh, formal first meeting between two powerful families that are about to marry their, uh, youngins off and increase the power. And it's like, I think Dixon's even like over on, uh, Gustav. <laughs> like a mom like <laughs> setting up his bow tie and like wiping off his, sh his shoulder pads um and sort of like like yes that's exactly right. that's exactly what a uh groom to be would look like don't you think desha i guess so oh <clears throat> wait wait there you go now that was better no i guess that, that that's the final touch that it needed uh Excellent. Well, so um and. not now to to I know his Abraham, Mr. Headstone, as opposed to the headstone in our present company, his uh entourage will be arriving uh any minute. Um so remember that all of the servants think this wedding is happening. Only the three of us and Daisy know that this is just a setup. So be sure to keep a tight lip. Uh, right. That means you especially, Desha. Uh, I have had them make the good tarts and set out the good wine, so that should be fine. <laughs> Desha, in, in your service to my family, you have become an absolutely artisanal sensical. I just want you to know that should cleaving people in twain ever become uh, tiresome for you, you could make an excellent living uh, as a as a butler. Or, I don't think so. Well, you're so good at it, dear. I'm trying <laughs> and just trying to be a compliment. I mean, maybe I would have to wear this all the time. And we, <laughs> it zooms out a bit to show the really, really nice dress that she now ha she's wearing. <laughs> oh God, God. It's, it's all the time. And it's I like that. It, for anybody who's seen Black Lagoon, it's like the maid from black lagoon where she wears wears the main maid outfit but like you can see her rippling muscles through it <laughs> uh yes well i understand that little uh annoyance but it is absolutely essential now mm. best faces best appearances daisy of course will be making her entrance later uh and now um timely to the plot there um, likely question. yeah how old is daisy 19 how old were you uh, well, i don't think she was that old 17 yeah, yeah marrying a 20 year old to a 17 year old in the well, west i was only curious because I, I think being that he's already obsessed with the group being that she is you know, about his age, the kind of same wild flair. He might actually like her a little bit. So he might find this like, hmm. Sure. Mm, well, okay, you know, probably <laughs> nervous just about the whole thing. So he's probably been more quiet than maybe normal. Anyway. And I, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm just going to throw this out there. She normally wears like a jeans and a plaid shirt and suspenders mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and like a little, little page boy hat. Okay. Uh, so when she walks down later uh, for this meeting, uh, uh -oh. he's surprised. It's going to be shocking. Like, shh. <laughs> <All right. laughs> exactly. uh, so a motorized vehicle pulls up out front. And oh. from outside, first steps out a young woman 
Uh, she's slightly older than Daisy. She's wearing a twinborn coat, so it's like a misting. Mist, uh, she's wearing a mistborn duster, uh, and she's got two enormous revolvers on her hips, and she's got the gun belt with the ammunition in it, and it it looks like she probably has more guns like sewn into the mistborn duster. Oh, great! Uh, and the belt buckle reads "Adium." What if it was one go with... <gasps> it's Adium Annie! Adium Annie! We <laughs> uh, only had three episodes left. <laughs> as the camera zooms up, she takes off her... It's those little tinted black, so tiny they don't actually cover the entire eyes glasses. The, like, yeah. bash the stampede villain glasses. Yes! Uh, and yes. takes them off to, like, look around and then puts them back on. Uh, and then, like, gestures inside the car. And out steps Abraham Headstone, looking particularly old and grave. Uh, we got the, you know, the, the thinning, balding hair, the elderly corpse taker look. Mm -hmm. Suspenders over a buttoned shirt. <laughs> and from the back of the car comes... Was it the second Matrix movie where there were two guys in white suits <laughs> oh, with bl God. slick black blonde hair? They <laughs> come out behind those. him. They're <laughs> twins. Uh, and they are clearly related to Gustav in some way. Uh -huh. uh, they they definitely appear to be like maybe his, his brothers or cousins or Is that some relation. Is that an older version of the Matrix? Is that what you're <laughs> alluding to here? <laughs> Uh, Some dumb programs I, don't go away. <laughs> so they move in formation. Adium Annie leading the way to the door, stalking forward. Kind of a little bit of stomping action going on there. She doesn't seem particularly pleased. The two brothers in the back just kind of sauntering. And Abraham just looking around like, hmm, impressive for, you know, a, a no name uh, like Beaumont. <laughs> Probably we hear him muttering stuff like that. It's like, <laughs> God damn it, still. Uh, <laughs> Adia Manny knocks on the door and is like, Y'all gonna open up in there? So, uh, Desha, of course, <laughs> opens the door. Uh, Welcome to the Beaumont estate. Oh, yeah, Adia Manny just sizes you up and is like, You look tough. You wanna fight? <laughs> not right now. Here, right now. Party. Oh, oh, <laughs> well, you're now. like, yes, Did you say now. not now? <laughs> yes. All right, she flares the mist coat and puts her hand on one of the guns. It's like, when's good for you? I'll be your elderberry. After supper. All right, then. Y'all heard no. that, right? She said we're dueling after supper. Actually, uh, well, that actually... Abraham is like, one more coffin means nothing to me. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Jesus. Mr. Headstone. Welcome to the estate. Mr. And Abraham Headstone, by my very eyes, is that the famous Abraham Headstone? Come to the Beaumont estate. Welcome. Welcome. I'm guessing you probably don't actually know who I am or have ever heard of me before. As a matter of fact, I have. Your family is rather, uh, how do I say, uh that word for spread out all over the place right uh, estranged no no <laughs> no desha uh, uh so yeah I'm abraham starts laughing recently. when you say estranged she's like well that's well, someone here isn't full of shit at least i've been breathing recently <laughs> how nice i have a high fiber diet <laughs> oh right may i take your coats uh, Adia man, he's like, you ain't touching nothing of mine. I'll fight you. I'll fight you anywhere. Uh, no. the two brothers both take off their white suit coats and, like, dust them down from the travel and then hand them both to you. Gustav's like, all right, no, no, uh, Abraham's like, now, where is my son? Ah, uh, here is... Huh? Room to be, and I sort of, you know, like flare as I turn around and show the uh, Gustav, who is, you know, big behind me anyway. Um, I was really worried your sheet was going to fall right then. 
Nope. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then Lucas is there. Like, how did we set that up? <laughs> Magic. <laughs> Well, Actually, that would have been fucking incredible. That would have been <laughs> Holy crap. I mean, you and PN have to do that at some point, Tuck. <laughs> Just have PN playing behind a green screen, and you're behind a green screen, and no one suspects anything, and then one day you're just like, I'm tired of your shit, Thea. You just rip it down. <laughs> like, just back to back right there. <laughs> All right. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm That's another I'm walk in. And praised and uh you know. yeah ibrahim seems very disappointed in you he's like uh you could have at least dressed up nice you look like you're some sort of grave digger boy well haven't i you told know. you you keep hands off the business you get get your kids to work on it for you why ain't you been married yet <laughs> <laughs> when i was 20 years old i was already on my second wife <laughs> Yeah, we are alleviating that shortcoming. That's what I'm working on now, Father. Maybe if you wouldn't have kept me at work so long, I could have already been there. Right, but... right. Well, I've already heard from you your entire life. Where's the girl? Ah, Daisy will be joining us later. You know how she has to prepare and... Uh... Actually, I don't know that. Well, you are all so tired from your journey, we thought we would start on some luncheon and that she would uh, uh, make her stately appearance. Is she hideous and trying to put on enough makeup to impress me? No, I think I've had be... six ex-wives. I know how this works. <laughs> no, I'm getting face a little, just a little defensive. Just now, bring the girl down already. <laughs> Wait, uh, just a second. Well, we all right, Desha. Please put the coats away and then uh, gather Daisy. Uh, at least, Mister Abraham, uh, Mister Headstone, please join us in the parlor where we have set up luncheon. At the very least, I will not sit down to eat while a lady is still not present. I had thought you had some manners, Mr. Beaumont. Well, I, we, I guess we just do things differently where I'm from. <laughs> we do things differently where I'm from, too. Now, let me see which town that's from. <laughs> <laughs> we are told where the GM brings up a map. One moment. <laughs> no, I mean, I think he's very self-aware of, of his, like, reputation. Uh, <laughs> Most likely. <laughs> All right, Desha will leave, like to like uh, our clo the closet, or whatever. Put the coats away, and then head upstairs. Um, then k -k -k -k. Miss Daisy. Uh, uh, yes, Desha. Are they ready for me? Uh, yes, your father-in-law to be wants to see you. Right, right, of course. Can can you make sure this lace is straight? I just, it's so fiddly. Yeah, she'll come in and then start messing with it, making sure it looks all right. And uh, this plan is odd. Yeah, what? Did you have a better idea? No, I don't get paid to make plans. Well, then... <laughs> Don't complain about them either. You look pretty. Well, that was the point. Thank you, Daisha. You look good in dresses. They don't work for me. I don't like them. So unweasley, though. I don't rather like them. <laughs> you look good. I look bad. <laughs> you look good. You look fantastic when you wear dresses, Daisha. Fantastic. Hmm. Well, I suppose we should be getting down there. We don't want to keep the gentleman waiting too long. All right. Yes, he does not seem like a person who likes to be waiting. He does not seem like a person who likes many things. Oh, well. God. Everybody likes me, so I'm sure this will be easy. Hmm. Let's go, then. Uh, this is like, like snap open the fan, head down the stairs kind of thing. <laughs> Yep, we'll head down. Okay. Uh, when you get down there, what? W tell me the entrance that you are making, Daisy Desha. Like, like is there, is it like a concentrated effort to be like a Jane Austen novel approach, or do you <laughs> yes. just show up? 
No, totally okay. Jane Austen level approach. I mean, I I will roll for this if you want me to. Like, I, I'm just I, curious like, how it goes down first, and we'll figure that out. Charm, like <laughs> she wants to make a ridiculously good first impression. Uh, describe it to me. Anime, and... like uh, you know, uh, the the anime where style where Gustav just like gets a nosebleed in the background kind of thing. <laughs> um, so Daisy is like, there's like a, at the bottom of the stairs, like the stairs swoop around towards the facing the parlor doors that are like wide open. So they see, they hear Desha coming down the stairs because she's loud. Yeah. And they see just behind her, Daisy is coming down the stairs with a, uh, uh, a long walking dress uh, and it's got like uh, a modest um, she's wearing like a, a modest uh, corset underneath that uh, that gives her uh, a little bit of a boost but mostly it's like her her chest is like covered in like inches of frilly lace uh, uh, covering her cleavage in a, a very um, suggestive but still modest uh, way mostly to hide the huge spikes sticking out of her chest, but we don't talk about that. Um, <laughs> uh, and her, her short hair is like got um, like flowers, like, like, a, like a little crown of flowers on top of it. Uh, the dress itself is a, like a floral brocade with like, like ribbons around her waist and like a, the, the kind of sleeves that come out to like her elbow and like kind of poof a little bit. Um, and then she's wearing like uh, like fingerless gloves up to like partway up her arm. And uh, yeah, so she comes down and, and s like slowly walks down with that, that perfect pose, uh, poise, that's the word. I know how to English guys. <laughs> Uh, so it doesn't uh, look like Abraham is impressed, uh, outright. No. Well, shit. He's just kind of like, ah, you got good taste, boy. Looks like my third ex-wife. Of course, she's about five years too young. Of course, you're about, you're about a decade younger than I was, so I guess it all evens out. Oh, man. All right, let's sit down, girl, and eat. Say our prayers to good old Harmony. Yes, excellent. Uh, right here, right this way, through the parlor. Uh, yeah, and when he, he sits down to eat, he does, like, insist everybody stop, hold hands, and give Pathian prayers to, to Harmony. I want to know what Daisy sees when a prayer to Harmony is being performed. I mean... Her. I would also like to know your that. your character or you. I think wreckage. Me, okay. wreckage would yeah. like so to I know what so hallucination all like, has. Not, probably not, like... a, not a hallucination, guys. Yeah. What actual communication from God she has? I mean, as the prayer was going on, you see, it doesn't look like the guy you saw before. Interesting. It just looks like a kind of nondescript Caucasian like nobleman era uh white guy blonde hair long sleeve shirt buttoned up tie black pants just like putting his hands on the back of abraham's shoulders and he's like not this one the train was fine the train was full of them but not this one can't you see he's one of you <laughs> and Daisy's like, I want to ask what that means, but I haven't figured out how to talk without. <laughs> yeah, like she's like, like yeah, a little bit freaked out right now, but she doesn't. So for uh... viewers in chat, ever since Daisy decided to drive a gold metal spike through her chest, she's been having these weird visions that might be from God. Who knows? 
Man, mm. my like meta level knowledge is conflicting with my player knowledge and my character knowledge, and like along with the I don't know what the fuck Arthur has done to twist this knowledge. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I'm like a little bit freaking out here. Um, yeah, Daisy does. I, I don't. I think she still doesn't know what to make of these visions, you know. And it's even more confusing now that she's seeing this other personification here, talking to this guy, saying cryptic things. And uh, can I like determine like? Who he's referring to? He is he talking about? Oh, he's. I mean, he's literally touching Abraham. He doesn't want Abraham right. to die. Okay, so he's telling like me not to kill Abraham. He's not talking to Abraham. Yeah, no. he's looking at you and talking to you, but his hands are on Abraham's back. Yeah. I see. Well, I'm glad I'm about to wow. piss off God. <clears throat> Oh, um, man. I just, mm. so like when I, like, does Abraham any, have any kind of reaction to this? Nope, of course not, only you can I, see. I, I didn't think so, I just had to ask. I. Oh, yeah, no one else in the room reacts. Nope. He's still going on about how I, we all have to respect the Pathian way and that harmony watches over us all in the mist. And that when we die, we return so that he can guide us into the great beyond. Yes, well, uh, uh, do tell us more about that great beyond. I'd rather eat my salad, thank you. Uh, well, I thought you were... <laughs> the prayer is over. Assassin. Okay. <laughs> he just takes, like, the salad togs and, like, dumps. And you know what? He, like, gets all the tomato slices and is, like, putting them on his salad before moving <laughs> the bowl along. <laughs> Yeah, that's fine. Um, what what I have studied the group enough or been privy to knowing their abilities? Uh, I guess that's up. To, I would say that we wouldn't have come forward with our abilities. It would be up to whether or not you. I mean, Desh's abilities have to be super obvious. As Probably. Well as yeah. the I guess more Daisy at this point. Uh, Daisy's ability is new. As far as anybody knows, she is just really. A, a, a normal human who totally healthy she's good with guns well yes. I, I guess i should go back and ask did we exchange knowledge because i'm also an iron comp compounder but i wouldn't have said it right away i would have felt it out to see if there was an exchange of information to you know be on the same level so i guess i would have told you if you would have told me i guess i'm just curious I guess the conversation probably would have gone like, well, we're going to have to take out his bodyguard and you don't happen to know anything about that. You aren't capable of helping in any way, are you? And then if you said, well, I am a compounder like this, and I'd say, oh, well, good. Desha can do such and such and Daisy's good with a gun. And under no circumstances would I tell you what I can do. <laughs> I guess I would. I would lean to Daisy since I probably an next term. Like, I mean, he likes you. He thinks you're pretty, but. I don't know, maybe depending on if you want to disclose any kind of abilities you have, he might like you more. That's what he looks for in women. Well, I mean, she's very headstrong, so she would have been like, I don't I don't need any special powers to be the best that there is around here, and I'm going to prove it. Well, I agree with you. I'm she just... says in a very hypocritical way. <laughs> after, after gaining special powers. <laughs> For secret special powers. So while that's happening, ADM Annie puts her her elbows on the table and is like ripping apart a chicken, uh, sitting directly across from Dixon, eating with her mouth open, staring daggers at him. Mm -hmm. uh, she still hasn't removed her coat, uh, but she see eat despite her literally. It's like watching a Velociraptor eat, but somehow none of it manages to land on her, and she's just like Dixon Beaumont, right? That's right, and you're Adiamani, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. I heard that there is a low-down rascal who worked for you. Yeah. A coward, uh, some might say. Yeah, well, as soon as your uh, uh, little uh, uh, challenge went unanswered, we disassociate ourselves with such a person. Well, I want to fight him. I want to fight you, too. 
Me? Oh, yeah, I heard that you were a real good shot. <laughs> who to- who said, I have never, f- I am not a shot, my lady, I'm afraid. Uh, so she you. removes the newspaper article where you saved Desha's life by intercepting the assassin's knife. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> she's like, you're a hell of a fighter. Ah, uh, well, I, I was After just... I kill her, maybe we can have a duel or something. Well, as a matter of fact, I have absolutely no qualms with you and Miss Desha having uh, a little bout, if that's really what you want. I mean, Uh, yeah, and then I want to fight you. I mean, she'll be dead. You'll need a new bodyguard. I'll prove how good I am. No. Speaking of, how did you find yourself in the the service of Mr. Abraham uh, Headstone? I was looking for someone that was going to go meet you. When he started saying that it Beaumont married something... I was like, oh shit, Dixon Beaumont. I can finally get through the front door and find that coward, yellow belly, runaway, small ball. <laughs> she just seems to be getting real mad. She's like, all I want to do is prove I'm the greatest gunslinger. Well, I, I will can't say do that-, that when the fastest man in the north is too busy running away from me. No, I agree. It was shameful what he did. Absolutely shameful. We haven't seen him in a while. I heard he got a job and is no longer able to be with us anymore. Well, that's because he's a coward. (laughs) Yes. Uh, An absolute yellow-bellied coward. Can you believe that he besmirched the name of Lord McKinley, uh, the the, the right honorable McKinley who has done nothing wrong in his entire life? I don't know Uh, who that is. No, uh, of course not. Um, Well, I guess we will... uh, I guess our after luncheon affair is already planned. Uh, yeah, you should fight me. Well, Desha first, surely. Um, and then I'll clean it up afterwards. Yeah, that that sounds like. An yeah, your dad nods to you and is like, "It's good. A man should take care of his own messes." <laughs> so, Mister Headstone, <laughs> how yes. how are you like in Trumadil? I'm not liking it at all. As you might know, I'm a very traditional man. That's why we'll be having the wedding at my house and weathering. Uh, I'm sorry? I mean, if you are sorry, that's your own business. I do believe we literally put in our plan that this would not be part of what this, that this sort of thing <laughs> is literally right there. He always does this to go to p- visit people's uh, weddings, etc. Um not that I'm trying to put a stick in the mud or anything. I mean, there's this thing that says complications and twists uh, on my on my sheet right here. Oh, well. Um... <laughs> I... I'm like... I don't really appreciate having to ride that far. This is supposed to be my day. What? And what? That's what? ridiculous. Your day. What? <laughs> now, Mr. Hedges... <laughs> what are you, some kind of sexist? Mr. Headstone, what tradition exactly dictates that the wedding occur in Weathering? What? No tradition. My tradition. Oh, well, then my tradition says we do it here at my estate. Well, marriage is off, then. Well, that seems a might hasty. Perhaps we can come to more agreeable terms. I mean, the terms of agreement are you agree with me. I could just... I, listen, I have a bunch of marriages on my belt. I've married off a bunch of kids. I know how this works. We need a nice big old event where I can gather all the families up. And the only place to do it is at my place. I mean, you got a real nice house here, but I don't think it's going to accommodate 70 people. Daisy walks over to Gustav and like puts puts her hands on on his shoulder on his upper arm or whatever and it's like are you gonna let him ruin our plans like this uh, of course not of course not uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, no uh, no 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 you married off many kids you know even kids that you actually like so i mean what's wrong with one of the ones you don't like just having a day here where it's easy why would you think I don't like you, boy? Well, you certainly don't show up, but that's... I mean, that's... you don't show up at my house. You leave for years at a time. You barely run your, your business. I mean, 
recently you've been really into putting bodies in the ground, but that's only been in like the past two months. Well, there's been and it, there's been an, a surplus of bodies to put in the ground in Trumadil. It's a violent time in this city. It's actually been quite busy. Whatsoever. Anyway. I mean, I could just get married without your approval. What then? He just starts laughing. He's just like, ha, 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 Well, Mr. Headstone, certainly nothing needs to be decided for tonight. The The guest quarters are immaculately prepared, and we can have an evening to discuss uh, the situation over... Uh... No, no, no. He literally waves, he waves you off and is like, Gustav... You think you can go toe to toe to me with in a test of wills? Absolutely. It's uh, been long enough. No. Oh. He's like, fine. Convince me then, boy. I feel like it's time to put dice on the table, my friend. I think so. What what exactly are you saying to convince your dad to to let the wedding happen here? You've seen it all. You've done it all. We can accommodate everybody, but for once, let me make a decision. Let us, and I look at Daisy, make a decision. Let us show how much we can show a great day for our family. And just let us do it. I think you might be surprised. Oh, boy, man. The thing, uh, you know what? Well, I mean, it'll come up in a second. Uh, yeah, it sounds like you're trying to charm your dad. Uh I know, which those stats are kind of low. I, I know you're spectacularly bad at it, and <laughs> and your argument was actually uh, not reckless, nor was it rebellious. Uh, you were literally like, "Listen, it Dad, we're just gonna bring it all together. We're gonna bring the whole family here. You'll be impressed." I I still think I could go for. The, I don't know if it'd be. I wouldn't be saying reckless, but bringing everything together so as i'm like literally watching this fail not that i'm saying you're going to fail but i'm like i'm i'm whispering to a servant to be like prepare the backyard for the duel between desha and adium annie this is actually like perfect you know go ahead and get it all set up he's, he's, a, he's a specialist in all things iron with his iron will ah <laughs> boom uh, you know what? I'll give you that for three dice. <laughs> <laughs> Woohoo! Three dice. You can do it. You're Remember, you say your luck on answer. You're rolling that's, against that's... your dad's five. So wait, what am I rolling then? Is it the charm of two? Uh, charm of two plus one for your specialty of all things iron. Okay. Okay. Uh, get wow. A pair... pair fours. You gotta get pair fours or pair fives. Well, pair fives, I think. You got three dice. It, it can happen. Say luck on answer before you roll. Welcome, answer. Really important. Did it go through? Nope. No, it didn't go nope, through. There it is. Oh, you got a pair of fours. Oh! Oh! Is that good? All right. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Let me consult my chart. I think that you just barely succeed. Oh! Well, the outcome is passable. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so your dad looks super disgruntled. He's just like, well, this is ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Fine. You know what? <laughs> you do it your way. And when it fails, and when you divorce this woman, after like two weeks, I'm never going to let you live it down. Until the day I die, I'm going to remind you of the mistake you made here. So never I, hold yeah, a family I... event. <laughs> In a location that cannot support your entire family. So uh, the um the camera like tilt shifts. It's like it's looking at Abraham, and literally when he says the day I die, it like tilt shifts to focus on Dixon, who's got to watch out. Like in a <laughs> <laughs> if he lived, he would live longer than me probably. So it would really be to the day I die. But I mean, gold gold doesn't let him live forever. He'll still die from old age. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. He'll just be perfectly healthy until that moment when his heart fails and he falls over. Well, I put my hat on. I'm like, sounds good. I don't expect that you would let me forget it. And I look over at my brothers and I'm like, Simon, Garfunkel. Uh, nice your brothers are just like, yeah, don't call us that. It's ridiculous. <laughs> I know our names are Simon and Garfield. <laughs> so, so first of all, it's like, there's a moment where Dixon is like, wait a minute. They have a 
like internally he's like they have a different accent but, uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> they're from like six different towns man yeah <laughs> exactly <laughs> it, it, yeah it's... oh that's great uh all right uh Thanks. yeah okay so past yes all right all right we're doing a very metal gear scene when we're outside with desha Oh, yeah. uh, Revolver Ocelot steps out, and as she does, she's twirling her two guns, uh, doing gun. She's doing the Revolver Ocelot Metal Gear Solid Three Young Ocelot gun tricks, where she's <laughs> juggling her revolvers, and then like shoo shoo shoo, uh, and she's just like, you know what these are, Coloss blooded. Those are guns. Guns. You think these are just guns? You think they're just guns? Oh no. They're handcrafted Emerling 44 revolvers. I personally shaved down the bore in order to accommodate the larger round size. I like to call this one the pewter killer. It's made specifically to kill Coloss blooded and thugs. So there was a <laughs> like I imagine Dixon is right next to Desha and he's like leans in and whispers like Go ahead and kill her. <laughs> uh, but she's like, don't worry. You're not worthy of dying from these. And she takes two handfuls of bullets and just stands and is like, whenever you're ready to get started. Oh, she's going to... Uh... <clears throat> okay. Do it. Do it. You can back down any time, girl. Just so we've set up the like best duelist in the world. We've set up like really fancy, like um, like cotton fold out lawn. <laughs> oh god, chairs. there's probably like one guy with a Roman candle that's standing there to light up the night. Who's like, yay? <laughs> <laughs> May I, um, like more enthusiasm, my... more enthusiasm. <laughs> yay! <laughs> I want to like talk about this and this that and like. My duty kicks in. I want to go up to each person and bring up my measuring rope and just be like, "Oh yes!" Oh, when you come up to Adi Amani, she literally just slugs you in the jaw and is like, "You get your damn rope away from me! I will wreck happen. you, boy! <laughs> I'm but, never yeah. gonna die. That's, That's why they call me Adi Amani because I'm too fast for death to catch up with me. I mean, is are you literally challenging death? Just be a nice pine pot. She's like. If, if death ever wants to come and find me, I'll take him down in a fight. I'll fight him anywhere. I'll fight him on the moon. Actually, I don't think they have a moon. Uh, I'll fight him on the sun. Oh, I can't wait to bury her. <clears throat> anyway. I can't wait to, for her to die. Um, I hope I hope Desha is capable of this. Uh, we have three episodes left. It'd be real shame to have to re-roll a character for two episodes. Uh yeah, she's just yeah. harassing you, Desha, to try to get you to, to like break down before the fight and not fight her. She's oh, like, come on. Like a... What's wrong? You chicken? Maybe you should just step down and admit I'm the greatest duelist ever. Don't do it. Like, there's you... just the nod from Dixon. It's like Go You wanna on. die, girl? You wanna die? Not particularly. But if you want to fight, we will. I sort of like head nod to the, to the servant that's got the mop in the bucket. <laughs> For what possible reason do you have a mop and bucket? We can gonna mop we... up the lawn. There are a lot the of lawn, guys... the lawn could use a good mopping. <laughs> I'm just gonna build their own shovel and some fresh dirt. I'll go get it. Yeah, like we'll just bury her right out here in the back, and I can say Adia Manny is buried at the back of the Beaumont Estate because she challenged. Uh, Are you patient there. enough for me to change into better clothing, or should I ruin this dress? Uh, so she's just like, you came all the way out here. I got bullets in my hands right now, girl. Are you serious about this? I Buy have to take dress. care of dinner. Dinner's take. Get on with it, Desha. He pays for these anyways. She's Rip. just like, Rip. You, sh you should die looking pretty at the very least. Rip. Uh, oh, I love that scene. That's beautiful. So basically now he, she rips the dress. So now like the sleeves are gone. The, like the long dress has been turned into like a skirt thing so she can move better. Um, 
And then, yeah, she goes and she grabs her cleaver and like flips it around. Uh, and yeah, so we're st- standing across from each other and we're in a fight. Do it. Yeah, I mean, are I mean, you set on going through with this? I'm, I'm definitely looking at your weapon and going, yep. That looks about like the type of thing that comes. Uh, I mean, yeah, final final chance. You sure you want to do this? Uh yes. Okay. We're gonna fight. Uh so we start with the character with the lowest wits choosing an action, and the character with the highest wits chooses the last action. Uh your wit score is three, mm-hmm. and her effective wit score is ten. <clears throat> okay. Um So, uh, one second. Let me look at Pewter again, just to make sure I do, 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 do. Pewter and Alamancy. Uh, how high can I jump? Uh, she does have, like, I mean, you're going for the fair thing here? I think her attacks are hit scan. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure how high I can jump. I was gonna like jump at her, but I guess running will be better. So yeah, I'm just gonna like fight starts. I start burning my pewter. Um, All right. So your your action is to run towards her and hit her. Yeah. Okay. Uh, her action is going to be to lift off into the air and then fire a wave of bullets down at you. Wow. Uh, and let's talk about action dice. Let's assemble your pool. Uh, I mean, obviously, you have physique for sure. Yep, physique, uh, five pewter. Um, Coloss blood for another two. Yep, Coloss blood for another two. Uh, and then I guess for traits, uh, I'm the one who knocks the strong resolve. Um, Tux, I think the key here is going to be how you separate your pools. I don't know how strong resolve counts into this. Can I she did. He didn't back down after she tried to like. I mean, she looked toward around. Dixon for approval. I did. Didn't you? Not really. No, like, I think Dixon like, gave his like, approval unsolicited. Ah, unsolicited <laughs> approval, the best kind. Yeah. yeah. And also, it was like, are you sure you don't want to back down? You, I'm the fastest thing in the like that. That you know, Desha mm-hmm. has to have resolved not to be a coward in the face of that. Like okay. a certain yeah. person who was so scared of Adia Manny that he quit the game. I don't think that's true, but I do like that that would be canon. That's literally, I'm pretty sure that's right, 100%. Spot on. Oh, I'm sorry. Ruby slaps her. So that's 6, 11, 13, 15. All right, how are you dividing that pool? All into attack. Oh, yeah, just... You can heal um, her attack away. Oh, I'm sorry. You don't actually have to make that decision until uh, the resolution. So you have 15 dice. Uh, she has considerably fewer dice because she's only moving with her steel pool, which is five, and then bumps There's up to seven from traits. So Go for the kill move, shot, Tux. You move Shall first. Stick it. I, I act first, or? you? Yes, you act first. How do you want to divide your pool? Um, I will do... <clears throat> kill shot, kill shot, kill shot. I can I can only do a max of ten, right? Uh yes. Okay, so I'll do ten and five. Alright. Uh as you approach her, she is going to push you away. Because you have a metal sword. So she can use a reaction to push a moving object, redirecting their flight. So she gets five steel, and then I think her zinc is going to let her do some crazy reaction bullshit. Uh, yep, she has ten dice to push you away with. Uh, so wait, so because of her pushing him away, she gets to add her push to her defense, basically. Uh, she. This is before she even gets defense. She has ten dice on a reaction to push him before he even closes. Really? Yes. Okay. 
Gross. Uh, and if she succeeds on this, you won't even be able to get close to her. Okay. Uh, she has literally any pair at all. Uh, <laughs> as you start moving towards her, you suddenly find yourself being flung backwards by a steel burner. Uh, you can attempt to resist this yourself with your but own... I have to be a pair of fives. Yes, and two sixes. Uh, would that... Would I... There's no reason not to attempt to resist this, right? Because it's a different. It's a different. You're going thing nowhere. Yeah, I mean, you you basically have no action this turn because you're being thrown back. Can he? Can, can I mean, he if he drops the weapon, here? can he just go? Yes. If you want to drop the weapon in the process, you can keep going forward. Interesting. Your decision. Uh. Hmm. Let's see. I love the idea you let's go with the weapon and just helicopters into a tree somewhere. I like guess it sinks in like six inches. Shit, where'd that go? Adventures, technology, equipment. Uh, do, 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 do. Coloss Cleaver. Ah, fuck. It's a lot of damage. Yeah, it's like plus four, right? Plus three. Yeah. Yeah, but on the other hand, what do you like? What do you resist the push with? Like, it's a different pool entirely, right? It doesn't take out of his attack or defense. No, it so... will take out of his attack. Oh well, then uh, if he doesn't let go of the sword, he's gonna have to resist it or go nowhere. Well, so I'm saying, like, her push doesn't go out of attack or defense. So does his resist come out of attack or defense? I mean, there's no way to resist this. It's literally a metal object he's carrying is throwing him across the room. Well, what I mean is the attempted resist is to just strength through it. Yes, right? that is correct. So, okay, it's... so if I resist, I don't do anything, and yeah, I guess I let the cleaver go. Do you, All right. You, so you, well, I, I just want to be clear here. Like, he would it, his resistance be a like strength roll? It would be the exact same die pool he already has. It would be him. Forcing his way forward using his pewter and his sword. Okay. Well, it, best case scenario is I do nothing. She flies into the air and shoots me with bullets. Yes, that is the. I mean, that's the. I mean, right. that's. If, if I don't let the. I don't know that me. that's the best case scenario, but that if is you the get a pair of fives one. And three, six, best best case scenario is I stand still and she shoots me. Worst case scenario is I fly back and she shoots me. Oh man, that cat is so chill right now, dude. It's just like, what's up? He's so um, fluffy. Dude. I don't think that's cool. It's too big. Dude, full yeah, 20. I guess I let Cleaver go right and bro. I'll just punch her. All right. Oh, no. That's uh, oh, I tried. I tried. Dang. She only has seven dice, so she is not going to commit anything to defense. Okay. So, punchman number 10. Uh, yeah. You, you can right, deal one damage. point of damage. Are you using the nudge to deal a second point? Um, wait, let's see. For, um, I think he, uh, is there like a coloss blooded unarmed damage thing? Nope. Nope. Deal all the damage. There's probably a pewter unarmed damage thing. Yeah. I think there might be, but I haven't taken any traits or not traits, but the perks or anything yet. Or does, does pewter just burning pewter to give you extra damage? Uh, extra? I don't think so. I'm looking at it right now. Let's look at that right now. I mean, I don't think it does. Okay. Um, yeah, okay. Yeah, I'll just deal an extra damage. All right, two points of damage. Uh, she's going to take a burden. What would you like to throw on her? Wounded knee. <laughs> um, Are we just naming cities now? But. <laughs> Uh, let's throw, uh, bur wait, burdens are, sorry, sorry, it's been a month since we played, so I can't remember yep. exactly, but burdens, can I, can I, can I use burdens on, that, on, that I put on people? Yes, it will give her an advancement, but yes. Okay. Um, so I these will, are, I, like, the level of burden you can put on her is like bruise, sprain, laceration, pulled, slash Can I put muscle. swollen eye? Oh yeah, for sure. Okay, yeah, I basically, I punch her in the face. <laughs> And like, yeah, just knock her right here in the face, and like, just immediately, like, black eye, and it's kind of like, 
Yeah, like that. Uh, in the process, she fucking praying mantises into the air, lifts her hands up, and then pushes them before her, and drops the bullets towards you. And in slow motion, we watch as like each individual bullet. It's like a hammer strikes the back end of it, and the bullet fires downwards towards Desha in a hailstorm as uh, justice reigns from above. Uh, she's got seven dice to do this with. What about you? Uh, five. Uh, but you can she... call on her bruised eye. Um... Can he at this point? No, you have to do that when you're declaring dice. Okay, next time. So she is going to increase the velocity of this attack. So if it hits, it'll deal an extra damage. <laughs> That's just part of her steel push. Makes okay. sense. Um... Remember to say Luckomancer. Luckomancer. Wow, pair of fives. Luckomancer. Luckomancer. Whoa! Son of a bitch! Wow. Uh, oh, you know what we forgot to do? We forgot to throw so, complications on each other. So bad at role playing games. Uh, okay. We'll remember this next time. We forgot. I'm not going to hold you to complications right now because I forgot to do it too. Uh, you get hit for three points of damage. Uh, nudges don't do anything? As a wave of... The nudges would cancel the complications that would have happened. Uh, okay. Some of them. Uh, alright. Yeah, it's a it's literally a hailstorm of bullets lands around you, and you get hit by, like, three of them. Uh, and she just remains holding her position, floating in the air, like, come at me, bro. Uh, and it's like... Wait, the, she's hovering? Yeah, she's hovering on a bullet. Uh, and she's just like... It's over, Desha. I've clearly won. There's no way you can get me up here. Just surrender now. Just take the bullet. Uh, br 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 one second. Let me see how much my health increases. I mean, she's just, I mean she, she literally has a gun belt. She could just keep dropping bullets and coins or find something else to anchor off of. God, how vindictive would that be to literally be like, kick the bullet out from beneath you? So she drops a couple feet? Um, uh, well, first of all, you can leap to that height, but second of all, since when did they get to hover? I thought they could only l leap. No, it's mentioned a bunch of times that Kelsier and Vin just hover in the air. It's really hard, but it's possible. Okay. Actually, it's the opposite of that. They mentioned it's easy because your body's used to balancing on weight. You know, you're super strong. You could probably toss wood at her, and there's nothing she can do. I do have a wood shield on me. Mm. Oh, sorry, I can't. I can't find it under the thing. How much does my health increase when I'm burning? By your pewter level. Okay. And also, you have got gold to heal. Like you can take forever, basically. Um, okay. Um, she's just like you can't win. I've got rock. the higher ground, Desha. How high is she floating? Uh, or, well, she like, she could just push. I mean, further yeah, away. she's at like thirty feet. Um. Well, I'm not allowed to do anything besides attack her, so... Uh, I mean, before we start the next round, she's giving you a chance to surrender now that you recognize her obvious superiority. Um... Uh, is there anything around me that I can throw at her? I mean, your sword is stuck in a tree. You could probably finish chopping the tree down there, George Washington. <laughs> The whole tree at can you not leap 30 feet with pewter? I cannot. It's not okay. that high. I could, maybe she could be um, pulled down. Oh, I just want to cheat. No, I, 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 I am an entirely... She, she, this character was designed to beat me. So I mean, this character was just designed to win duels, period. Right. Like, uh, there's literally nothing I can do. I mean, I think she told you that before the fight started. Yeah, I... <laughs> Yeah, but you can just outlast her too. Like throw wood. You can go into the house and get a grandfather clock and throw it. Like she. Don't do that. No. You you got you got yes. enough gold right to heal, basically any well, damage. So uh, do we want to sit here for two hours? Well, bullet heal, bullet heal, bullet heal. Literally, in order to complete our goal, the goal is kill the odd job. So odd job needs to die. Uh, uh, right, duel. A duel is not the best place to kill this person. I mean, was did we say kill? Did we say we, kill? We, we would need to like smother her in bed I or something to, to kill out. her. 
take out is the terminology we put there. So yeah, smother her in bed. Come on, that's uh, Dixon's department. I, I'm 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 for I'm for throwing the tree at her. That's my vote. Uh, I surrender. All right, she comes floating down, and it's just like, ladies and gentlemen, the greatest gunfighter in the entire world, Adi Amani. Yes, you're better at shooting guns than me because I don't shoot guns. Thank Congratulations. You. She just looks incredibly smug. She's got her, her thumbs hooked into her gun belt. That's all you can all do. Right. Um, I, let's see. Uh, her nose is still bleeding from where you punch her in the face. So her smile is a little crooked. Uh, <laughs> probably got a chipped tooth. <laughs> Next time, throw the tree. Uh, I'm gonna tap thirty gold to heal my three. Okay. Uh, yeah. When you start visibly healing in front of her, she's like, "That's not fair." Neither is flying. You are literally air. flying and throwing bullets at me. It all evens out. I mean, that's a thing people do in duels. I'm this is also a thing people do in duels. My action away. I, Sorry, I'm Father. No coffee. I'm hoping to kill her or she'd be dead. <sighs> Adium Annie, uh, like, stomps her boot and just, like, storms off super mad. Uh, and she's got her guns out and is just doing gun tricks with them. Like, shoo, 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 shoo. she's like, I'm the best gun in the West. Can I just pull her guns away from her? Uh, Have yeah, you, you can if you want to try that. Not right now. The fight's over. Just step forward, like, like just stepping forward a little bit, like, I'm like, you know what? Mm, just getting a little mad, and maybe your arm is kind of like, mm -mm, young pup. Just a tiny tug, just enough so that she thinks she drops it when she was doing a trick. Uh... <laughs> just start to reach forward a little bit, but if you put your hand out or anything, I would, I would stop. I mean, nobody knows. Um, all right, well, I'm extremely disappointed in you, Miss Desha, but I guess we'll tie for the evening. Um, you really should have. You can't punch, punch things 30 feet from me. You should have thrown the tree. That. What? You can throw a tree. I've seen you do it. I've seen you flip a car. No. Well, this is entertaining, but I need to go send, uh, Fast messengers out to the family. They'll be here by next week for the the wedding. Well, it's already almost eleven. We should really turn in first. Yeah, I don't actually need to sleep. Ah, uh, really? He always works the greatest shift hours. Uh, and he looks at his <laughs> son like, yeah, he's like, he got it, he got it. <laughs> but seriously though, uh, I work best at night. Oh, well, that makes sense. Uh, we will, uh, uh, of course, uh, provide you with ample working conditions. Um, I'm just going to go to my hotel. So you are not staying in the guest room, as previously discussed. Ah, uh, you know, I got to get my stuff out of the hotel. I will arrive tomorrow morning to take your... And he, like, looks over your house. He's like, hospitality. How are you going to fit 70 people into this place? We're thinking outdoor wedding. Well, we were, we were going to have it on the bowling green. Um, right, right. I understand that room. part. The physical outdoor location isn't the problem. It's where 70 people are going to sleep. Uh, well, 70 people can enjoy the hospitality of True Medill's uh, ah, fantastic hotel chain. So your hospitality, yeah. I see just how far your hospitality extends. Well... And I'm sure you could create a list of priority state. Uh... You know, I'll probably just buy out one of the hotels or something. Of course. Uh, God, what, what would he do to drive the knife in here? He's like, unlike some people, we in Weathering, or, you know, wherever I'm from, <laughs> actually know how hospitality works. I'd be interested in seeing your wedding plans. Well, uh, as you say, you take the grave shift, perhaps. Uh, we could resolve that this evening. Yeah, speaking of resolving, we haven't talked about dowry yet. 
But uh, given the size of your house here, I'm guessing it isn't going to be much. <laughs> and then he, like, turns to, what, what do we call them? Simon and Garfield? He turns to Simon and Garfield's like, get your coats. We're going back to the hotel. Make sure to pack your rooms tomorrow morning. And no continental breakfast. Oh. I'll Thanks. leave to get the coats. We never so, and then return with said coats. <laughs> Simon and Garfield like reach for both the coats simultaneously and are both like thanks in the same syllable. Uh, you're welcome. They're annoying like that. Always happen. So is Adi and Manny also going back to the hotel with them? Uh, Adi and Manny just disappeared into the night. So. Uh, <laughs> should have thrown the tree um, I mean I'm sure she'll return to ruin the wedding at a suitably dramatic moment or since AD Manny is literally missing and it's just these three chuckle fucks let's just do it now you want to, okay you want to you're like oh my god is that what you're indicating <laughs> you're, the like, you're doing the commander <laughs> shepherd during the rex moment where you're like do it Ashley <laughs> <laughs> yeah, basically. Um, These are my people, Rex. And you're like, <laughs> put them down. <laughs> Too dangerous. Like, if Adium Andy is literally gone, and like we delay them a little bit with talking about the wedding, and she's not here, she's the odd job, she's the bodyguard that we have to worry about. Let's just fucking pull the trigger. Like, I think there's a moment when. Gustav is like gonna help them like with their coats and Desha is there and Daisy is there and it's the four of us who all know the plan and we sort of look around and Annie not here and we sort of look at each other and we're like oh let's just do it like let's just do it it was six guys with guns or was it <laughs> one guy with six uh. guns <laughs> oh. uh, well that's a perfect place to take a break I guess our our party members will discuss whether or not that's a plan they want to pursue. And if it is, then I guess it's a murdering time. Uh, and we'll go with Waltzing Matilda. So join us again in seven minutes when we figure out just how many ball bodies hit the floor. Uh, and thanks for, for rejoining us, because Alloy of Law has been off the air for a while. So. <laughs> thanks, Tom. You ruined it. It's a... Uh...